we're going to read this book called Grand Canyon. And it's a big book and it has a lot of information at the end, which we're not going to be able to go through, but we'll get a whole lot of it done. There's a map of the Grand Canyon and this shows where it is. It's up in the upper northwest corner of Arizona. And here's the map of the Grand Canyon. And most people come to this Grand Canyon Visitor Center. And some people go to the North Rim Visitor Center. And here's Phantom Ranch. So if you go from the South Rim to the North Rim by way of Phantom Ranch, that's a long hike of about 24 miles. All right, let's go. Rivers carve canyons. When they cut down into the earth, canyons grow deeper. As weathering and erosion breaks apart their walls, canyons grow wider. Over time, rivers wash all of the eroded material away. These processes have been at work for millions of years, relentlessly excavating the mighty gorge known as Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon is one of the largest canyons in the world. It is 277 miles long, as much as 18 miles wide, and more than a mile deep. But it's much more than just a big hole in the ground. Look at that wildcat. It's home to an astonishing variety of plants and animals. The canyon is much hotter and drier at the bottom than at the top. Because of this, different groups of plants and animals, or ecological communities, are found at different elevations in the canyon. The hottest part of the canyon is at the very bottom, a thousand foot long, a thousand foot deep chasm called the Inner Gorge. And here's the the Inner Gorge may be in the the Inner Gorge may be the hottest part of the canyon, but there are Oases in this desert. Oasis. There's the boreal forest, the ponderosa pine forest, the pinyon juniper, juniper woodland, the desert scrub, and the riparian. It's along the rivers and streams of all elevations. And then this one's below 4,000 feet, 4,000 to 7,000, 7,000 to 8,200, and above 8,200 feet. All right. Creeks bring the bring bleh, creeks bring life-giving water into the gorge, and a wide variety of species live along their banks, including frogs, dragonflies, mule deer, and the endangered southwestern willow flycatcher. Many of these creatures are permanent residents that rely on running water for survival, while others are visitors drawn here by their first thirst. So here's a raccoon and a spotted sandpiper and a canyon tree frog and Lucy's warbler and desert willow and tree lizard and beaver and flame skimmer, dragonfly and cottonwood and Arizona bark scorpion and morning cloak and red spotted toad and a spotted skunk and a blue grouse beak and cattails and an American dipper and a spotted bat a net, fly, net leaf hackberry, and a southwestern willow flycatcher, and a rosebud. Eventually, every creek in the canyon flows into the largest stream of all, the Colorado River. The Colorado River runs the entire length of Grand Canyon, continually washing sediment away and slowly deepening its channel. It has been cutting into the land for around five million years, slicing through layer after layer of rock. Today, it's cutting into the Vishnu basement rocks. These rocks are part of the continental basement, the bottommost layer of rock on the continent. Okay, and over here we have rock layers in Grand Canyon with approximate dates. The Kaibab Formulation, the Toro Weep Formulation, the Coconino Sandstone, the Hermit Foundation Formation, the Supai Group, 
the Surprise Canyon Formation, the Rock Wall Limestone, the Temple Butte Formulation, the Moab Limestone, Bright Angel Shale, Tapiz Sandstone, and then here's the Grand Canyon Supergroup, and the Inner Gorge is here, and there's the Colorado River, and this is the Vichu Basement Rocks. So many different layers of rocks, different kinds. The basement rocks are the oldest in the canyon, as much as 1.84 billion years old. Many younger rocks layers are stacked on top of them. If you hike out of the canyon, you'll pass younger and younger layers as you climb, as if walking up through time. Whoops. Oops. And this shows starting more than a billion years ago, layers of sediment such as sand and mud piled on top of the basement rocks one after another. These are sediment layers. Over time, the layers of sediment turned into layers of solid rock such as sandstone and mudstone. There's the rock layers. Much later, Grand Canyon was carved into these layers. The youngest layers are at the top and the oldest layers are at the bottom. Above the basement layer, you'll reach the Grand Canyon Supergroup. Here, you may find ripple marks preserved in the stone. Clues like these tell us what this place was like when the rocks formed. They are like windows to the past. This is the Grand Canyon 1.2 billion years ago, when the only living things on Earth were microbes, such as algae and bacteria. Although they were too small to see, these primitive organisms filled the oceans and were some of the earliest life forms on the planet. The mud from this tidal flat eventually transformed into a layer of solid rock, and these ripple marks were preserved in the process. They are now part of the Grand Canyon supergroup. After climbing out of the inner gorge, you'll find yourself on a broad, sun-baked slope. The plants and animals here are well adapted to life with little water. Black-throated sparrows can go for long periods without taking a drink. Many creatures sleep during the heat of the day. Pocket mites forage at night and are preyed on by owls and rattlesnakes who are adapted for hunting in the dark. These animals are living on the rock layer called the Bright Angel Shale, which formed more than 200 million years after the Grand Canyon supergroup. Trilobite fossils in the rocks tell us that this spot, oh, we'll keep going, spiny lizard, antelope ground squirrel, banana yucca, rock pocket mouse, desert tortoise, bursage, ringtail, California barrel cactus, black-tailed jackrabbit, and chuckwalla. And canyon wren, western long-nosed snake, black-throated sparrow, collared lizard, kangaroo rat, Mormon tea, desert shrew, black brush, Grand Canyon rattlesnake, and grizzly bear cactus. Okay, trilobite fossils in the rocks tell us that this spot once lay beneath the sea. This is Grand Canyon 515 million years ago. By this time, the Earth's history, in Earth's history, many multicellular plants and animals had evolved. Soft-bellied jellyfish floated above clam-like brachiopods and tiny hyloliths, some of the first creatures on Earth with shells. Trilobites, the first animals known to have had eyes, roamed the sea floor. Around them, worm-like creatures burrowed in the sediment, sediment that eventually transformed into the Bright Angel Shale. Towering over the Bright Angel Shale is a massive cliff called the Red Wall Limestone. The Red Wall has many inaccessible caves that provide nesting spots for one of the rarest birds in the world, the California condor. With a nine-foot wingspan and weighing as much as 23 pounds, the condor is the largest land bird in North America. Condors are vultures, and during the Ice Age, they fed on the carcasses of mega beasts like giant ground sloths. Since then, their population has declined, 
due to changes in climate and human activity, and now they are close to extinction. The sea covered the Grand Canyon region many times in the past. As the sea level rose, layers of sediment composed of sand, mud, and shells piled up. So erosion brings sediment to the sea. The sea level rises, sediment layers accumulate. The sediment was compacted and cemented together over time and became sedimentary rock. Different kinds of sediment became different types of rock. With shells of marine creatures, mud, sand, limestone, mudstone and shale, and sandstone. See? <coughs> Above the red wall cliff is a slope of rust red rock. The climate here is not as hot and dry as below, and pinyon pines and Utah junipers are common. Many creatures such as squirrels, chipmunks, and wood rats eat their seeds. These small rodents are preyed on by gopher snakes and coyotes. At the top of the slope is a rock layer called the Hermit Formation. Okay, so the wood rat, sagebrush lizard, rabbit brush, rock squirrel, pinyon pine, gray fox, Utah juniper, raven, cliff chipmunk, cliff rose, pinyon jay. Pinion jays feast on pine nuts, but they don't eat them all. They bury some and let them grow. The trees feed the jays, and the jays plant new trees. Together, they help sustain the pinion juniper ecosystem. Desert cottontail, peregrine falcon, northern pygmy owl, pinion mouse, coyote or coyote, broom snakeweed, Townsend's solitaire. Okay, at the top of the slope is a rock layer called the Hermit Formation. Fossils in the Hermit tell us that long ago this spot was home to large, huge dragonflies with an 8-inch wingspan. This is Grand Canyon 280 million years ago. By this time, life was flourishing on land, and trees, ferns, fish, amphibians, and reptiles had evolved. The sea had retreated from the region, and rivers flowed across the landscape. Seed ferns and conifers grew along their banks, and amphibians left their tracks in the mud, mud that eventually transformed into the hermit formation. Above the red slopes of the hermit are pale, 350 cliff, uh, foot cliffs. Bighorn sheep easily navigate their narrow ledges with specially adapted hooves. In the fall mating season, males compete for dominance by smashing into each other with their battering ram horns. Okay, as Grand Canyon's rock layers were deposited, the remains of plants and animals were buried and some became fossils. A trilobite dies. Sediment accumulates, shell becomes fossil as sediment becomes rock. Erosion eventually exposes fossil. Fossils are the remnants or traces of ancient life that have been preserved in rock. Most fossils are found in sedimentary rock. Fossil footprints and worm burrows are called trace fossils. Fossil skeletons and shells are called body fossils. These cliffs have been carved from the Coconino sandstone. Fossil footprints in the rock tell us that on this spot, 275 million years ago, see those fossils on that rock, an early reptile walked across huge windswept dunes. With little water, life here would have been difficult, but the desert wasn't entirely barren. Among the other species that called it home were scorpions, millipedes, and spiders. As the desert wind whipped across the landscape, sand piled up in thin layers. Today, those layers are preserved in the Coconino sandstone as thin, angled surfaces called crossbeds. As you approach the rim of the canyon, the climate becomes cooler and more moist. Vegetation on the sloping Toro Weep formulation is more dense than below. Before exiting the canyon, however, there is one more layer to scale, the Kaibab formulation. When rocks break apart, it's called weathering. When the broken pieces are carried away, it's called erosion. 
Ice and growing plants break up rocks in Grand Canyon, and most of the sediment is removed from the canyon by water. Grand Canyon's walls have both cliffs and slopes because different layers erode in different ways. Sandstone and limestone tend to break off in blocks, leaving cliffs. Shale and mudstone tend to crumble and form slopes. Often, shale erodes beneath limestone or sandstone, and the cliff wall gives way. See, that's what it's showing here. Limestone and shale, and it's showing it breaks here, and then that part breaks off. The Kaibab limestone cliffs are full of marine fossils that tell us about life here 270 million years ago. See, there's one of the fossils. <laughs> And that is what the path looks like. Mm. When the oceans again covered the land, fossils in the Kaibab formulation tell of a complex ecosystem. The sea floor was home to sea lilies and bryozones, sponges and coral. Trilobites and brachiopods lived alongside them, while nautiloids and as many as 40 species of shark patrolled the water above them. Many of these creatures, such as coral and brachiopods, had hard shells. When they died, their shells piled up on the seafloor and eventually transformed into the limestone of the Kaibab formulation. If you ascend from the Colorado River to the south rim of the Grand Canyon, you will have climbed nearly 5,000 feet and passed through three distinct habitats. Above the rim, you'll find one more. The Ponderosa Pine Forest is home to tassel-eared squirrels, deer, and elk. Bobcats, coyotes, and hawks hunt here, as well as the top predators in the canyon, mountain lions. A goshawk, elk, uinta chipmunk, American kestrel, Ponderosa Pine, western bluebird, mountain lion, porcupine, hairy woodpecker, gamble oak, evening grosbeak, albert squirrel, kayabab squirrel, wild turkey, striped skunk, stellar's jay, mountain mahogany, bobcat, great horned owl, turkey vulture. The ponderosa pine forest is home to tassel-eared squirrels, deer, and elk. Oh, we read this part. <laughs> and it talks about bobcats, coyotes, hawks, and mountain lions. Okay. Because of the great size and depth, Grand Canyon has a wide range of climates and habitats. And species that call the canyon home today survive on ancient rocks. Rocks that tell us about life here long before there was a canyon. Let's see the middle here. Ooh. The grandest canyon on earth. Whoop. Whoop. Ah! <laughs> if you're still with me, you're seeing what a hassle we're doing here. There. The grandest canyon on earth. Look at that. Mm. It's taken millions of years of weathering and erosion to expose these rocks and shape this breathtaking landscape. And these processes continue to this day, relentlessly excavating. And there's more information about the Grand Canyon and about the Grand Canyon ecology, the boreal forest, the ponderosa pine forest, the pinyon juniper woodland, the desert scrub, and the riparian. And, whoop, and then there's another page that talks more about the different types of rocks and fossils and how canyons are carved and about the Colorado River and the story in the rocks and the note from the author about how they chose what to put in the pictures. And that was Grand Canyon. It told a lot about the different, different layers in the Grand Canyon. 
Yeah, I've hiked the Grand Canyon rim to rim twice, once south to north and then north to south. It's a long hike, but it was interesting to see in this book so many things that I'd seen before. I loved it. So if you enjoyed this story, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you back soon.